Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangal. Well, welcome to episode number 101 of the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. My name is Joseph Sangal, and I'm joined, as always, with my co-host, Megan Hibbard. Are you fired up? Fired up. It's a yes. good Monday. Yes. Monday. It's Monday. Monday. Did Happens you know it's Monday? Are, all the people that are driving in their cars, you know, they're, they're is it really Monday? Mm. Uh, can I go back to sleep? But <laughs> we're going to talk about something I think is super interesting for so many people. Uh, some of you, you may already do this type of thing, but uh, for others, it's one of the top questions we get. So tell everybody what we're going to talk about today. Yes. So today we're talking about choosing a stock investment. So the question is, with the drop in the stock market, I really would like to purchase a stock or two, but I don't even know how to get started. I'm sure I'm not alone. Can you please talk about this on the podcast? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> and so this is something that if you've ever wanted to be able to buy and sell a stock, if you've wanted to get into the stock market, if you have a 401k, 403b, and you have mutual funds, most people do have at least one mutual fund, maybe for their kid's college fund. This is about buying and selling an individual stock. And so if that's something you've always wanted to do and didn't know quite how to do it or which one to choose, we're going to try to help you with that today. So stay tuned. Awesome. Okay. So our featured resource for this month is um, our ebook bundle. So when people fill out their senior yearbook, no one ever has written down, I see myself struggling financially. They haven't? They haven't wrote that down? <laughs> Maybe someone has. I don't know if you have. Usually know. they're more aspirational. <laughs> yeah. However, statistics <laughs> still show that 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. And now that percentage is higher than ever with unemployment rates. So it's our passion to help you understand what God's word says about biblical stewardship and provide practical steps to change your life. So this month we're offering our ebook bundle for only fifteen dollars, and that's over fifty-two percent off of what it usually is. That's so awesome! It's a great deal. So this bundle comes with all eleven of our eBooks, and they're instantly delivered to your inbox. So just go to iwbnin.com/help to grab this offer today. That's awesome. I think it is interesting to sit there and think about kids. You know, this we just finished graduation season. Uh, some people are just graduating still right now, mm -hmm. June eighth. But here's what I know. Uh, no one who's in their right mind writes down in their high school yearbook, I want to be broke. I want to declare bankruptcy three times. I want to go through multiple divorces. I want to have relationship failure after failure. No one writes that down. Right. Yet so many people experience it. And so we really want to equip people so they don't have that. And that's why we wanted to get these books in people's hands, you know, really, really economically. And so check it out, iwbnin.com slash help. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they are, they cover a myriad of topics. Yeah. I think that's how to works. budget, how to yeah. manage money with a non-participating spouse, how to start investing. Yeah. If you're a single parent, how to deal with that, how to sell a car if you're in the negative. So there's lots of different things that I feel like are applicable to everybody. So it's going to be a great one, but it's now that time for the greatest segment. <laughs> you all get to hear me sing it. Let's go. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. I was broke, now I'm not. Our saving and investing tools are designed to help make more informed decision. Whether you are wanting to know what your investment strategy will produce for you by retirement age or determining how much you should save from each paycheck for known upcoming non-monthly expenses like Christmas, vacation, and car repairs, you will find the calculator you need at IWasBrokeNowImNot.com and just click on tools and then select saving and investing. Yes. And so the current money event section topic as we said, we're going to kind of talk about coronavirus, COVID-19, economy reopening. I'm going to sing the whole thing. <laughs> uh, the states are reopening. It's amazing. <laughs> Businesses, essential services, and non-essential services alike are beginning to open. It's amazing. It's my next career. This is how we're going to go viral. But no, so, something's got virus. <laughs> uh, it's coronavirus. Update. Some statistics to share. More than... 39 million have now filed for unemployment. It's going to be over 40 million by the time this podcast releases. It's wild. Unemployment claims hit as a percentage of existing jobs have hit around 20% in major cities. Most of them are hardest hit are tourism driven, like Las Vegas, Myrtle Beach, New Orleans. Mm -hmm. For people earning $40,000 a year or less for that group of people, it's been much worse. They have lost 40% of them have been laid off or furloughed. 40% of them. Wow. So what does that merely mean? For the people with the least amount of margin, the least amount of income, the least chance to build up savings and protection, 
uh, they are the ones that are paying the price. Mm. These are all your restaurant servers, your service workers, tourism workers, frontline employees. They are the ones that have been laid off and furloughed. It's really horrible. Mm. And so the only fix to this is to restore economic activity. So pardon me while I wax philosophical and practical. There you go. The only fix is to have economic activity. Not Like government fiscal policy is very important times like these. The economic impact payments, you got yours. Mm -hmm. uh, many people got theirs. 180 million people have gotten theirs. Uh, we've had Paycheck Protection Program. We've had the CARES Act as a whole. We've had pandemic unemployment insurance for gig workers and Unemployment has been extended and increased for most people who are unemployed, but that money is all just new debt, $3 trillion of new debt for the national debt. Mm. So economic activity will be greatly stunted until people are receiving consistent, that's a big word, income, and they have the confidence that it will continue, right. that they'll go to work, that the job will be there, work will be there, they can produce stuff and get paid money for it. There are many bankruptcies coming beginning in retail. We've heard for years how J.C. Penney's is failing. Mm. They've filed for bankruptcy protection now. Neiman Marcus, bankruptcy protection. Mm. J. Crew. That's so, that a was surprising to me. Brand yeah. Bankrupt and it won't stop there. There are so many people. Hertz Car Rental mm. has now declared bankruptcy. Yeah. And so as Warren Buffett has famously said, it's only when the tide goes out that you find out he's been swimming with no clothes on. And that is a financial term in saying that these companies had too much debt, not enough financial reserves. Why did these companies go bankrupt, Joe? Because they didn't have enough reserves and they had a bunch of debt. Yeah. Why does anybody go bankrupt? They don't have money to cover their obligations. That's why. And it won't stop there. So even though it's with a lot more zeros, it's the same fundamental fact. They can't cover their financial obligations. So what is the bankruptcy protection? Like, what is that? So bankruptcy do for them? protection allows them to make debts disappear. Hmm. In some cases, it equals new repayment organization. So that it forces the creditors to the table to write off some of the debt and come up with new terms. In some cases, it wipes out the debt entirely. It also, for publicly traded companies, in almost all cases, means that the stock becomes worthless mm -hmm. because the last ones to be paid any money are the shareholders. Yeah. The creditors are in front of them. The suppliers are in front of them. The employees of the company, the pensioners, the retirees, all of them get priority in these cases, even if the company is totally liquidated. Mm -hmm. Now, in most of these cases, these companies will not shut down. Yeah. They will have restructured so that they can thrive going forward. And frankly, J. Crew, J. C. Penney, they've been headed there for a long time. Yeah. And so I said all of this stuff to emphasize the importance of having very good control of your financial situation during these perilous times. Maintain cash margin. That's money in the bank. Money in the mason jar, 14 steps from the old oak tree. Just don't tell anybody which oak tree it is, <laughs> or at least what direction. Um and make sure that you minimize your expenses and be ready to invest when the moment arrives that you feel confident. And also, we encourage you to continue to practice generosity so greed and selfishness are pushed far away and kept far away from you. So hmm. nearly all of us will get through this unique, extraordinary, unprecedented time. That is without question. What is in question is, how will we emerge from it? And by taking proper steps... You will emerge from this pandemic thriving instead of surviving. And that's all I had to say about this current money event. Get fired up. There you go. Okay, our success story today comes from Gary. And Gary said, I'm happy to tell you that a lot of the current information regarding limiting all expenses and trying to get by does not apply to us at this time. We're blessed to be currently employed and winning with our money because of what you teach. We are currently tithing, sponsoring children, contributing to charitable to lo local faith-based organizations, fully funding my Roth, contributing enough for a match on my employer's 401k, contributing to a 529 for each child, and contributing to an HSA in addition to the employer contribution. We also have an above average IRA for my age. And then he also shared that his wife has been ultra frugal, helping them to pay off debt even, when, even while they were a single income family with young children. 
It was her birthday recently, and Gary wanted to thank his beautiful wife, Karen, for her hard work and commitment. So he shared his love, respect, and admires her for helping them get to where they are today. That's so That's sweet. That's awesome. Oh, and I Gary. actually know Gary and Karen personally. They're so sweet. Um, and so this really is awesome. Yeah. I remember I met with them more than a decade ago hmm. and was just offering tweaks. Yeah. And, man, they, they latched hold of it and, man, really positioned themselves to, to thrive. And that's really what I, I just want to say to everybody is, number one, we celebrate with Gary and Karen and I think it's very neat that he wanted to offer that success story That's really sweet. to honor his bride. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, the bill payer of the family, the one that feels the heat the most of the finances, uh, is an unsung hero position. Mm -hmm. Usually the other person kind of freely does whatever they want with the money in a lot of cases. And we really, we, we really teach a lot about how you should unite together and really make sure that you agree on where the dollars should go and he's he's showing that that has happened, mm -hmm. that he's on board and he has like become the cheerleader of his bride. And that's awesome. And I just encourage every single person, you may be uh, not working well with your spouse. Hey, if you make the changes right now in this mess uh, with all this time you have at home for many of you, hey, what will you be writing us in 10 years? Mm -hmm. You know, so many of us think that this is just something that we we fix and forget about it. But this is a journey. As we say, money is a journey, not just one moment. And I want you to take the step today as you listen to this podcast. Have the difficult conversation. Really speak uh, to your spouse if you're married and really make sure that you have a real positive conversation about money. Because if it's been something that has been less positive, more negative, uh, you can change that starting today by having a productive conversation about it. And who knows what you could write 10 years from now I trust me, it'll be a lot better than if you don't have the conversation. So Man. way to go, Gary and Karen. We're cheering you on, and we root for everybody else. We pray that everybody is inspired by the story. It really is awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. The like the list just went on and on of the things that they're able to do in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. And so it's if you're a listener and you're like, I, I'm not there, like I can't do any of that stuff. Well, it didn't happen overnight. Like they worked at it, but yeah. you could be in a position, you know, in a month where you're able to say in a month and a week, whatever, where you were able to say, I'm able to do one of these things and like how great that would be. So we always encourage you to take a step. Everyone's steps are different. So what is the step that you could take where you could be able to ride us in and say, Hey, this was the step I took. Yep. This is how awesome one it was. One step in your journey. Yep. Get fired up. Take it today, please. Okay. So to the moment we've all been waiting for. So the question, just to remind you, is with a drop in the stock market, I would really like to purchase a stock or two, but I don't even know how to get started. I'm sure I'm not alone. Can you please talk about this on the podcast? So. Yes. We have steps. Okay. Let's go so, through the steps. Number one is to get set up. Yes. You have to get set up to be able to buy stocks. So uh, you could, of course, pay a broker and they will charge you a lot of money. Buy a lot of money. I mean, 25 to $75 to n navigate a stock purchase. Uh, or you could do it yourself. And so today we're kind of talking about you doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. And so th as you get set up, the first thing I want you to do is determine the purpose for your money. Is this money that you're investing, this is investing, not saving. Mm -hmm. This money will be at risk. Uh, determine your purpose for the money. Is it for retirement or is it for a dream that's a little ways off, but before retirement? And the reason that matters is you're going to set up an account and that's either going to be if it's for retirement, it should be an IRA, an individual retirement arrangement, or a Roth IRA, or if you're in Canada, an RSP or TFSA. And so uh, if it's a dream that's a little ways off, but before retirement, well, you would want to set up a regular trading account. That's also known as a brokerage account. Mm. And remember our five-year rule. What's that five-year rule, Megan? It is don't invest any money you may need within the next five years. Yeah, if that you need the money savings. in the next five years, it should be savings. Don't invest it. Things go down in case you haven't noticed in the short term. <laughs> okay. Now then you need to establish your stock trading account. This is part of getting set up. And so we like Schwab.com, TD Ameritrade.com, E-Trade.com, Fidelity.com, Ally Invest. And if you like app investing, you can do it through Robinhood or the Acorns app. But, you know, we have ones that we like, but I can tell you right now, I use every one of these. I, I, I mean, I... I use the majority. I use Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity. That's ones I use the majority to a lesser extent, E-Trade and Robinhood. 
but choose the one that you like. They're all great. And then you're, you'll be set up. So mm-hmm. uh, choose the, the, the website you want. Schwab, TD Ameritrade, uh, E-Trade, Fidelity, Ally Invest, Robinhood, Acorns. We'll have a link to all mm-hmm. these. Yes. And then, and then set up your account. If it's for retirement, an IRA or Roth IRA. If it's for a dream that's a little ways off, but before retirement. But again, you don't need the money for at least five years. A regular trading brokerage account. And yeah. then you have the next step. Yes. So number two would be to fund the account. Yes. And so we're going through this. You, the question was, how do I choose which stock to invest and how do I get it? So we're doing the setup because it, the devil's in the details. Mm-hmm. And we need to get the devil out. So <laughs> we've got a lifeless devil, come out. So we're <laughs> saying we're going to get you set up so that all the details are out of the way and that you have money in position. So when you choose a stock, you can buy it that day. Yes. You don't have to wait until money gets there. Okay. So you have to fund the account. You've set it up. Now you got to put some money in it. Uh, you need to transfer money into the account. You can do that via a check. You know, the 90s called. They want their checkbook back and their fax machine. But if you want to write a check, you can do that, Dad. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, Or you can EFT it, electronic funds transfer it from your regular bank account. And here's how it works. Just like when you set up an online bank account, a lot of times they'll they'll set up two little deposit accounts mm-hmm. in the account that you're trying to fund it with. You have to go confirm those two amounts, and right. then they know that you have access to that account. So they assume that means you have rights to pull money in and out of that account. Yep. And that's how they verify that you are you, okay? So it's that simple. I opened an account today. I opened a savings account at Ally. I'm trying out Ally. Love I've Ally. been using Marcus and... Capital One and all that forever, but I want to try Ally because I, I know a lot of people use it. You use it. We do. Yeah, we yep. love it. And so I wanted to set it up today just to check it out. And it deposited a couple little accounts already. It said they've sent it. It didn't. I didn't see it. But within an hour, it said we've already sent the two little deposit amounts. Mm-hmm. So you get like free dime or nickel. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Live it up. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can move the money into the account. So once it's verified, you can say move. $250 over, $200, $200,000. I don't know what the number is for you, hmm. but move some money over to the account. So you've gotten set up, you funded the account, now what? Now, number three, an important part, is to get educated. Yes. Now, there are so many different companies, thousands and thousands and thousands of publicly traded companies. It can be overwhelming. It, it is overwhelming. Yeah. Let's, it's not can be. So <laughs> I encourage you to choose five to ten companies that you're really interested in. Yeah. Just choose five to ten. Here's, here's how I kind of decide. Do I like these companies' products and services? Do I like them? Better yet, do my kids like them? You know, because, of, you know, you know, we all know, parents, you know your kids spend all your money, right? If they're into it, then we're going to get more of it for them, right? And so then the next question, after I like their products and services and my kids like their products and services, then I ask the question, is the company profitable? Important. That's very important. (laughs) Now, it doesn't mean I won't invest in them if they're not, but if if they are profitable, I want to know, are they sharing those profits with me, the shareholder? Mm. That's called dividends, And so I like companies that pay a steady dividend or they use any profits to invest in growing their company. I want to see evidence of growth if they are doing that. And then the next question that I ask, and this might be a little complex, so maybe you can help me unpack it so it's not as complex. You ready? Yep. I want to know what the price I'm paying for the share of stock per annual dollar of profit. Okay? So... Think about this. If the company produces $100,000 of profits a year, many of you would love to have that company, Mm -hmm. but you want to buy a little piece of share of that company, and that company had uh, stock, total stock, all the shares of stock was 100,000 shares of stock for a dollar a piece. Okay? So that means that there were 100,000 shares of stock at a dollar a piece means the value of the company is $100,000. And it's producing $100,000 of profit a year. So you're paying, per dollar of profit, you're paying $1. That price to earnings ratio would be one to one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if it was $500,000 was the value of the stock, those, th- uh, those 100,000 shares are worth five bucks a piece, and it's $100,000 profit, then you're paying $5 of profit, or $5 per dollar of profit. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So that ratio would be five to one. If I had to pay $15 per share, well, that means the value of the company is 1.5 million. And I paid $15 per dollar of profit. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, now think about this. The average price to earnings ratio, that calculation I was just doing, is about 17 and a half to 18 in good times of the stock market. Hmm. So think about that. The average person pays 17 to 18 dollars per annual dollar of profit produced by that company. Mm -hmm. Why would they do that? Well, many times that company also produces, you know, dividends that are equal to a dollar or two dollars or three dollars a year as well. Mm -hmm. And so dividends over the long haul make up for about two thirds of the overall rate of return of any investment dividends. And I love dividends because, and the reason I'm focusing on it is I want the company to be accountable to paying its owners money back. Mm -hmm. I don't want just the value of the stock to go up, which I do want that to happen because mm -hmm. the company's growing and innovating and new products, new services, new brand penetration, all that stuff. But I want them to be accountable to giving money to the rightful owners, yeah. which is a shareholder. Mm -hmm. When you own a share of stock, you are a rightful owner. And so you, I like 15 or less as a ratio, okay? And right now, when you go low the stock market, with this coronavirus happening, <laughs> there's a lot of them that are less than 15. <laughs> now, if it's a rapid growth stock company, like Amazon has been, you know, they don't share a whole lot of their profits, if any, with anybody. Right. But they've grown, and they're growing, and they're reinvesting all these dollars in their world takeover, really. Seriously. And as a result, their stock prices went way up. So if they're doing that, I'm okay with that. Mm. And then I like to ask, what are the long-term prospects for the company? Where are they headed? Like Apple, where are they headed? Where's Microsoft headed? Where's Cisco headed? Where is uh, where is uh, Outback Steakhouse headed? That's mm -hmm. a publicly traded company. Um, where is uh, PepsiCo headed? Where's J.P. Morgan, Bank of America? I don't know. But choose your five to ten. And then the last thing is, what do the experts say about the company? And this is why I really like Schwab, because they provide great research, and they provide a letter grade like in – high school where the, it's A, B, C, D, or F. <laughs> and plus they a, get, have access to a lot of other analyst research and ratings. And so we have this list. We're going to include it in the show notes. But just to summarize it, do I like their products and services? Do my kids like it? Is it profitable? And if yes, do they share their dividends with me? What am I paying per dollar of profit? What are the long-term prospects for the company? And what do, what do the experts say? And once I get there then I'm going to narrow in on the one or two that I want to buy. Yep. So what's step four? Step four is you actually get to purchase the stock. That's right. So we got to purchase the stock. Have you ever done this? Have you ever purchased an individual stock? No, we haven't. We're, yeah. We stick more towards the mutual funds and ETFs and all that kind of stuff. See? So she, she is paying mutual funds, mm -hmm. and those mutual funds have operators mm -hmm. so that they buy and bit. sell the individual mm -hmm. yep. ones. And the expense ratio is actually their trading costs mm -hmm. and their salaries and everything else. And they have more degrees than a thermometer, most of them. They're very <laughs> smart. So you got to purchase your stock. So within the trading platform you've chosen, you can find the company of which you're interested in purchasing stock and select the button. Some of them say trade and some of them say buy. Click that button. And there's two ways to select the purchase amount. You can either click the little calculator and say, I want to buy $300 worth, and it will calculate how many shares mm -hmm. you can buy. And, or you can say, I want to buy four shares and it will calculate it for you. Yeah. And then you make sure you have that amount of money and there it'll tell you if you don't have that amount of money to invest. <laughs> and then uh, the good news is there's no longer any trading fees. So as of l the start of this year, there are no trading fees on any of these platforms. Mm -hmm. So you can buy and sell stock at no cost. Giddy up. The bad news is there are no longer any trading fees, which <laughs> means people buy and sell like crazy, like day yeah. traders. And so... You can click and it will say confirm. And uh, if you want to buy it at whatever the going price is, you click market price. If you want to limit how much you pay for it, like if the price is really rapidly going up, you can say, hey, I don't want to pay any more than this per share. And then off it goes. And as long as it meets the terms of your order, it will process that transaction in 3.1 milliseconds and you will be the proud owner, part owner <laughs> of that company. And then, of course, you can monitor that stock on the frequency you desire. All of these platforms have an app that goes with it as well. Mm -hmm. And so today, I was buying a bunch of stocks. I was I was having fun. I was clicking and buying. <laughs> and, you know, I, I share all my stocks at 
I, I was broken. I'm not dot com slash investments. And today, just so everybody knows, this is you get right now relevant information right here on the podcast. I bought some airline stocks, uh, Southwest, United Airlines, Delta Airlines, and American Airlines. I bought them all. Uh, I bought some bank stocks, JP Morgan and some Bank of America. I had some holdings in some of these already, as you know, if you've watched my investments. But I feel like that that travel thing's getting ready to fire up. Mm-hmm. I can tell you one thing. Joe Sangle's getting ready to fire it up. Oh, yeah? I'm going to mask up, and I'm going. Where are you going? I, I'm just going to go places. <laughs> I'm going to get on planes, and I'm getting in trains, and I'm getting automobiles, and I am going. <laughs> I have never stayed at home this long, period, That's true. in my adult life, not even hardly in my youth life, because yeah. my dad loved to travel as well. And so you can buy and sell your stocks. Uh, uh, you can sell it the same way. Just click sell instead of the buy button, which I've accidentally done the inverse <laughs> of that before as well. Oopsies. And so hopefully we really want, we want to hear from you. Um, we're thinking about doing an investing challenge to walk people through this step by step. Mm-hmm. But number two, if you're thinking about buying a stock or if you finally buy one, hey, that's a success story. Let us know about it. We want to hear about it. Okay. So our verse for today is Ecclesiastes 11, 2, and it says, invest in seven ventures, yes, in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Yeah. Invest in seven ventures, yes, in eight. You just don't know which one is going to be horrible. And so what I know is I bought several stocks today because I'm living this. I'm investing in seven or eight and hoping one of them turns out. <laughs> uh, but the re- the reality is I've done it uh, with wise counsel, with with research, and I made some decisions. And I've been doing this now since I was 22. So I'm 46 now. It's 24 years that I've been paying attention to some of this stuff. So, hey, you can't get 24 years experience in one moment, but you can start your journey towards it. And you will, you at first, it will make you nervous. Uh, but over time, you'll become more comfortable with it. And I will tell you this cash sitting in a jar won't grow anything but mold. Mm. You got to put it to work. If it's invested money, put it to work. Yeah. And you know what? You'll be on your way maybe to becoming one of those stories. This person invested a dollar fifty in Amazon and now look at them. Mm. Yes, Amazon. That's an expensive stock. Um, Okay, so next episode, we're going to talk about how to prevent your employer from controlling your life. So, so many people we meet with feel like their employer has complete control of their financial future. Any decision the employer makes to reduce hours or pay has an immediate direct impact on the person's life, and they have little to no input on the decisions. Well, this next next episode, we're going to discuss how you can prevent this. So we're going to share some tips that you can be in control of what happens to you. Yes. And, and so to, to read it exactly, we're going to share you some tips that help you be in control of what happens to Y-O-U Incorporated, <laughs> which is your favorite business, all of you, right? And so it's going to be a lot of fun. And frankly, I think it's a unique title. Yeah. Yep. So if you like today's episode, please help us get this podcast to other people good benefit. You can do it by quickly rating our podcast, leaving a review, and sharing it on your favorite social media platform. And if you've implemented one of your tips, please share your success stories with us. Who knows? It might be featured just like Gary and Karen today on the podcast. So until next time, get that stock, get it working for you. And if it's not growing, what will it be doing? Dying. We'll see you next Monday. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast. Presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.